Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is JC and Stuff here. Today we're gonna be looking at a Canadian maple leaf coin. This is a gold coin of about one ounce, one troy ounce of uh, pure gold, or at least the closest to it, which is 99.99%. And um, we're gonna be testing the authenticity of this coin. Again, we're gonna be uh, comparing to the values that this coin is supposed to be. Uh, we gather some information from the Royal, the Canadian Royal Mint website, and also the American Precious Metal Exchange, uh, the, their website as well. And we also gather uh, some more information from the Provident Metals webpage as well. So brief history on this coin. This coin was originally minted uh, or began to be minted back in the 70s as a result of um, the demand for gold bullions back then. Um, I'm not going to go into detail as far as the history. We're just going to focus more on the authenticity of this coin. We're going to try to prove that it, this is in fact uh, made up of uh, gold. And then to do so, we're going to be using the same method we've been using up to this point. We're going to be using the same tools. We're going to be using this uh, electronic caliper. We're going to use our scale with a um, capacity of 100 grams and a graduation of 0 0.01 grams. And then we're also going to use this uh, ultrasound thickness gauge, which uh, is going to help us determine whether this coin is in fact made up of uh, gold in the inside. Um, again, I looked up the specifications in the Royal Mint webpage, the Canadian Royal Mint, and um, here they are. Okay, first of all, we're gonna do the weight test. This coin is supposed to be about 31.11 grams. So let's see how that does. And it's about 31.13, fairly close. Let's do that again. Again, make sure your scale is there. 31.1.3, 31.13 rather. So yeah, it's, it's pretty well within the range Yeah, 31.13. Okay, now we're gonna do the dimensions test. For that, we're gonna use our caliper. Let's make sure that our caliper is set at, at zero before we use it. There it is. Okay, so now this coin is supposed to be about 30 millimeters in diameter. And there you have it, 30.02 millimeters. That's fairly close considering that, um, I mean, our tools might be the, the, might not be the most accurate or there might, this coin obviously might not be perfectly 30 millimeters all around but it's fairly close. It's like within a tenth of a millimeter. So uh, that's a pretty close uh, margin error. Uh, if you get like a, something like 31 millimeters, then that should be a concern or 30 or 30.9 or something like that, then it should be a concern. And then the thickness at the edge of the coin should be about two 0.8 millimeters. Again, make sure this is set at zero. So, 2.81, that's the thickness at the edge of the coin. And we can measure in another part of the coin, just to make sure. And there you have it, 2.8 millimeters at the edge of the coin. 
Now, obviously, the inside of the coin is going to have a different measurement. As you can see, there is a sort of like a bevel along, along the edge. So the inside is going to be a, a little bit thinner, obviously. And the, the thickness along the surface is obviously going to change as well because of the engraving. So let's see what else can we do. For this next uh, volume test, I've set up a mechanism where I can just drop the coin into a, into a water cup like this to measure the the volume that is this of the water displaced by it and therefore measuring the, the volume of the coin itself. So here's my setup. I have I tied the, the little thread to the coin and then as you can see I have kind of like a pulley system here that I can just drop the coin into the cup and and also my cup is uh, has water in it what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna float the coin inside the water I'm not gonna allow anything to touch the coin and then I will figure out what the volume of that um, the coin is so there you have I put a put my cup already on the scale so you can see so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tear, make sure that, that it's equal to zero, and then I'm gonna slowly dip the coin in the water, allowing it to float inside again. And as you can see, the volume of the water displaced is about 1.61 cubic centimeters or milliliters in this case so I'm gonna go ahead and use that as our value to calculate the density of this coin so as you can see from our weight measurement which was officially 31.13 grams we take that and we divide it by the volume of the water displaced and that should give us the density of gold which is about 19.3 uh, grams per cubic centimeter so we're going to go ahead and punch in six one one voila there you have it about 19.3 uh, grams per cubic centimeter that's our volume for this uh coin okay so now we're ready to go ahead and measure our uh, coin thickness with the ultrasound thickness gauge this again this device sends out an ultrasonic wave through a metal or whatever you want to measure and then in this particular case i've set up the value to 3240 3240 meters per second which is the speed of sound through gold the this this coin is uh, supposed to be about 99.99 percent .99 gold so i don't need to mess with this uh number i just get the value for for gold whereas my other coin the 50 peso centenario in my previous video that coin was 90 percent gold and and uh 10 copper so that that one in particular you need to Put a, a different value to measure the thickness of it all right so I'm, i chose the, the front of the face of the queen to measure the thickness i put a little bit of ultrasound gel on it so i'm going to go ahead and measure and And it says it's about 2.33 millimeters in the front of the face. 2.33 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead. Now I'm going to go ahead and measure 
with my uh, digital caliper and I'm gonna compare that measurement to it. Again, make sure that your caliper is set at zero before you even start. So now I'm gonna measure right in front of the queen's face to make sure I get the similar thickness. So uh, there you have it, that's about 2.35 millimeters from the outside and about 2.33 from the inside, which makes sense. I mean, it's fairly close. 2.33, let's see, let's do this again. Yeah, 2.32, 2.33, yeah. Yeah, it's about, it's the same. Same, same spot front of the face of the queen. So, again, you gotta remember that the surface of this coin all is gonna change in thickness as, as you go in different parts of it. But there you have it, 2.33. And um, we can do a few more tests just to make sure that it, that it in fact is gold. Again, we can do our, our magnet test. And if this is a neodymium magnet right here, so this is a very useful tool as well. But as you can see, there's no, no magnetic to it. Also, you can also do the ping test as well, just like we did in our previous video. You can find a surface like this and then just gently tap the coin and then you can hear the, the ping not if we can hear it but that's how this coin sounds again if it was Another metal with a, with a higher speed of sound, it would sound something like this. Very different sound. It's just very, it sounds very, very solid. It's a, a higher pitch sound. Whereas my, my gold coin sounds uh, way different. And it also has a longer pitch, longer ping. I don't know if you can hear it. Okay, so I can safely say that this coin is in fact authentic. I've already measured it in different ways. And um, I hope that uh, you guys learn how, how to um, be able to, to tell whether this, these coins are made up of gold or not. This is my whole purpose, my whole intention of doing these videos. So you, so you, that's a lear learning tool or, or it's a reference tool. It's more of um, exclusively a, a, an educational purpose. All right. Thank you guys for watching and uh, see you next time.